Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're having a wonderful day on this um, chilly Tuesday, the 17th of November 2020. Uh, this is your Yoga Solutions Masterclass. Um, I, I've decided to start calling it that because it's, um, you know, I realized it's far more, uh, my, my, my stuff is far more involved than um, <clears throat> just um, a kind of straightforward stretch this kind of idea of, of things. So um, I, I thought I'd honour the content and I start to call it the Yoga Solutions Masterclass. It came to me this morning. So um, <clears throat> and it's and here it is free uh, for you lovely people out there, because uh, as much as much as it is a masterclass, it doesn't mean you have to have had um, many years of experience to resonate with the work. It's um, some of the terminology might uh, get confusing if you don't know any. Um, names of parts of your body but um, the, the work is entirely available to anyone you know, in that um, we you know we have bones we have straps between the bones that interfere uh, that can interfere with um, a sense of spaciousness we have the ground we have space we occupy and we have the breath movements of breathing <clears throat> all those things we have in, in common and um, all it takes to <clears throat> immerse yourself in this work is to be able to take your attention to those things, to the fact of those things, and your um, and it's your direct nervous, it's your own nervous system, your direct, um, you know, the, the, these intricate systems that have evolved over billions, of, millions of years or however long, uh, that give us the feedback directly rather than the intellect deciding what's happening. So uh, as much, it is a masterclass because it's um, it involves deep communion with yourself, but uh, at the same time, it's available to anyone. So that, that's um, that's my sort of <laughs> idea of the thing. But anyway, um, so today's subject. Let's get on with the content. Um, <clears throat> I, I've been conducting polls and. Uh, one of the uh, one of the subjects that came second, I think, in one of the polls was uh, freedom in the hips. So I think I shall. So so today's session is going to be about that. Uh, where to start? Um, okay, so let, let's get a different view going on. Uh, it, it helps to. Um, start with what we think of as hips. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, the fact of it is that um, the, the definition of hips is the joint or relationship between the thigh bone and the pelvis. That's the hip joint. <clears throat> Some people think of hips as the thing that happens, the, the experience that they have between the pelvis and the spine, and, the, and they tend to talk about the hips as the um, back of the pelvis here. Uh, when people are talking about hips, hip joints, the thigh bones and pelvis, they're, they, they're usually interested in the groins uh, because they're the things that, that seem to be in the way of movement. Okay, so I'll focus on that uh, today, although it will include something to do with the relationship between the pelvis and the, sp and the spine itself. Um, yes, so if you're, if you're thinking about the hip joint, uh, the hips as the relationship between the pelvis and the thigh bone, uh, it, I know I'm being kind of pedantic in the way I'm describing things, but the thing that people are feeling as their hips is the is the tension in the groins and that's not the hip that's one of the straps that travels between the thigh bone and the pelvis and uh, and actually um, the psoas muscle travels between the thigh bone and the base of the spine so that's why they uh, the two relationships I'm talking about are interwoven but basically we're, we're talking about relationships we're not talking about the the parts of us that are that are kind of complaining about that relationship if that makes sense um, I, I, I'll, I'll explain a bit more 
So, you know, uh, people feel like they've got tight hips when they can't sit, for example, you know, uh, or if sitting is, is, um, makes them feel the tightness in their hips. And that would be um, because the way they sit is reliant on the hips to carry their weight. Um, traditional thinking is my hip flexors are tight, therefore I must stretch my hip flexors. But the, what, what's missed is that um, the hip flexors are tight for a very good reason. Uh, I'll give you an example. If, I, if I'm sitting like this, okay, um, something's got to stop me from falling back. And the only thing I've got available to me is the weight of my legs. And the only thing that's going to stop it that can um, that will use if, if I'm not paying any attention to it. The only thing that will use the weight of my legs to stop me falling back is these groins. And um, you know, there, there's a, a a few things involved in hip flexors, but um, uh, as a, a adductors, there's the psoas muscle that runs from the thigh bone through the pelvis and um, joins in with some muscles within the pelvis um, to that's the iliopsoas to connect up through the sides of the lumbar spine. And um, basically, when you're hanging your weight against your spine, uh, like I said, something is going to have to carry your weight, and it's your groins. And no amount of bullying them into being longer is going to help. Because if, say, for example, you are able to stretch your hips, and, and the pe people's issue with the with their hips as they feel tight and they can't do anything about it. So they push away and nothing happens, right? Um, so, but say, theoretically, you manage to make that strap longer, what would happen? You'd be in a more complicated situation where the, the muscles involved, if you'd stretch the tendon, the muscles involved would have to work harder to, <laughs> to carry the same weight. So you kind of uh, disabled the thing that the body is telling you. You know, it's telling you that you need to be supported and it happens to be doing it with the groins. Okay, so that, um, sorry if I'm messing with your mind, but um, this, is the, this is where the solution lies in understanding the body differently. It, it's not going wrong. It's not, it's not doing something errant. It, it's not a mistake. <laughs> the thing that it's doing is in exact accordance to um, what you're asking it to do. So the job is to stop giving it that job. Stop giving your groins the job of carrying your weight. It happens, um, happens when you're sitting, when you're standing, if you, if, you, um, uh, if you decide that it's wrong to have a lumbar curve and, and you have to fix it by holding the pelvis, then you're going, you're going to be using those muscles to lever the base of the spine forwards and hold it there. And that, once again, is going to be causing tension in those muscles. They'll be bracing against the effort of the hamstrings behind it as well. So it, um, having, you know, you might say that, well, that's just what happens. Therefore, you have to stretch it afterwards, after, it, after it's got tight. Yeah, I suppose so. But then, you know, you're, you're stiffening it, you're stretching it, you're stiffening it, you're stretching it, you're stiffening it, you're stretching it. Uh, it kind of um, never ends and you never, never really succeed because you're always working in a way that makes it tight. Um, so first order of business is how to let them go. And the way to let them go is to organize yourself in a position where they're not given the job of carrying your weight. And uh, apart from that, we also want to be able, when we let them go, we want to be able to experience um, the space that it gives us when, when we do let them go. So this is the position I'd suggest. A um, bit of organization to help because uh, when you lie down, here's an example of pulling on the hip flexors to do a job. Uh, you're deciding to, uh, those of you that have been taught to flatten your back, will be doing it uh, with your root, with your, your, your pelvic floor, with some muscles around the buttocks and some bracing 
sympathetic bracing with the groins to kind of pull the pelvis up towards the knees. And you can do that all day, every day, but if you want some space in your groins, you need to not do that. Instead, you can float your pelvis, then there'll be some weight on your upper back. So when you push up away from your feet, then the upper back is anchored down, the head can slide away, so you get a bit of space for your neck and throat. Then when you replace the pelvis, you don't replace it away from you. You, you replace it close to you and it'll come back to the ground in a more of a neutral attitude. Now, uh, most people would feel neutral to be flat. It's not. Neutral is when you allow a gentle lumbar curve and a gentle cervical curve so that the spine can be confident in its curves. So that's the arrangement. And still, if, if there's any kind of uh, laziness in the feet, you're going to be holding your legs up with your groins. Uh, and that's not a, <laughs> uh, I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong, it's just normal. So instead of catching the weight with your groins, you know, if I said relax your legs right now, they'd probably fall out. You can organize things structurally so that that's no longer true, so you don't need to use your groins. But what a way of directly relieving the job um, of holding the weight of the legs with the groins, the way of doing that is by supporting the legs directly with your hands. So if you take hold of your thighs and imagine you're taking, you know, you've got your hands around the flesh of the thighs, but what you're trying to take hold of is the bone, the thigh bone within. And when you push away from yourself slightly, well, up to you how much, with the heels of the hand. It's sort of into the groins, but what you're taking hold of is the top of the thigh bone on each side, and the, the pressing away from you feeling, well, the pressing away from you gives you an opportunity to support the legs with your hands, so they can fall this way, that, that way, and your hands are doing the supporting. And as you lean through the heels of the hand, if you can sort of separate um, at the groins, as in you stop feeling the pelvis and the thigh bones as the same thing, and you allow the support that you're engaging with away from you with the heels of the hand, you allow that to cause a distance. And what the first thing that will happen is when you press like this is your lower back will lift more. Um, I don't want you to be lifting your lower back. That's not the point. It's just when you press away from you in the thighs, the pelvis tilts um, in medical terms anteriorly, as in the, the, um, the top of it tilts forwards. The, the, the bottom of it drops back. So you need to allow that and not resist it because resisting it is the very muscles you're trying to release. And if you can allow it, and your legs are completely passive whilst you support them with your hands, then you should start to get a, quite a strong sensation of elongation along the front of the spine. Um, but uh, it doesn't involve a contraction at the back of the spine, because you're not doing it with your surface muscle. You're not doing it with your lumbar, with muscles that attach to the lumbars. Okay? So essentially, you're supporting space between your thigh bones, which come back to around here, and the pelvis, this um, wing-shaped structure that um, sits in between those thigh bones. And if you support that space with your hands, then you can get a sense of the literal space that can arise between the thigh bone and the pelvis. So if you settle into that for a bit, and you know you can refine your pushing so that it's nice for the shoulders. If the shoulders are pushing forwards, that'll be bunched up in your neck. So you need the shoulders to roll back as part of the um, effort to support your legs. And then you'll, you'll sustain that space in the 
upper spine and, and core. So all sorts of things should be happening. The diaphragm will be ascending with this. And uh, it's the rhythms of breathing that allow the changes to occur. So you might notice with this kind of spaciousness in your groin, there's, a, there's much more of a, a sense of open heartedness, kind of an empty, elongated belly, an open heartedness and space in the groins. A way of feeling it directly is to imagine um, a sort of a laser beam of space, a, a light or, or breath, uh, dropping back into that space that you're creating, which will involve deeper releases within the pelvis and all around the pelvic floor. And then if you continue to support this space as you release the breath, there's a gathering, there's a deflation in the lungs that the body accommodates by gathering together. So you'll feel your belly emptying back. But um, as that empties, it's, there's an upward movement away from the legs that is essentially the release of the breath. And that change of pressure, that upward movement, is kind of taking the pelvis with you from, from the base up. At least it's taking the space within the pelvis up. So this is you actually releasing your hips, because what you're doing is you're supporting the legs at one end, and because you're doing it with your arms, you're supporting everything from the pelvis up, away from the legs. So now the groins no longer have the need to, or, or the, you know, the habit of supporting the weight of the legs. So you can experience what it means to be free in the hips. Okay, so now we get into um, function. So if, if you want to sustain uh, freedom in the hips, then you need to not brace with your groins in response to action. So uh, what, you can, what it would be useful to do would be to work out how to stand on your feet without closing your groins. So if you continue the support and then tune into your footprints, uh, probably getting a little more active with the fronts of the feet to start with because they're your actual feet and if you can find a way of using your feet your feet and ankles um, in a way that means you can give weight to the fronts of the feet then the support of the arms is kind of guiding the weight of the legs in that direction so you can sort of send your thigh bones away from you over your feet and something in the feet will help do that. So I find myself lifting my toes and spreading them. Um, what, what you want to find, what you want to work out is how to bring the pelvis up without lifting it at the groin. So you sustain that space, you stay relaxed, you stay with the dropping your weight through the upper body, which will happen because the pelvis comes off the ground. But you're also sustaining this length, this distance between the thigh bones and the rest of you. So I started with the fronts of the feet because you, in order to find support, you need to, like I'm doing, you need to spread your toes and kind of push outwards away from you um, in order to support up through you, through your structure. And because you're supporting this space at the front, where your feet push up through doesn't have to be against the groins. It doesn't have to make the groins pull together. What it can do is it can, if you can find the direction of engagement, the pushing out perhaps with a little bit of widening, so a kind of uh, a radiating out feeling from the feet, um, can get the forces of support to travel directly through 
the hip joints as opposed to against the space between the pelvis and the thigh bones. So if you can find that, then I know you're making you work your feet quite hard, but the reason I'm doing that is because when you've got that fundamental support for your structure from your feet, when you lower the heels, you don't stop supporting yourself with your feet. You, you keep it going. In fact, it gets more intense. And what happens when you try and lower the heels without losing that support? What happens when you use the fronts of the feet for purchase to get the heels down is that support that comes through you stays with you, but the heels going down takes hold of the space within the core and sends it away from the feet as well. So the fronts of the feet going down and pushing away sends up through your bones, and then the touch of the heels gets you involved away from the ground from deep along the front of the spine. And the things that we want to happen, like the base of the spine traveling forwards, happens because of the way you're touching the ground and not because you tilt the pelvis. So what we've got is a movement away from the ground through the bones and a movement away through, from the ground through the core because I'm pressing down and out through my feet. And throughout this, your job is to sustain that space between thigh bones and pelvis. And the, the, the heels can be helpful in that, in that if you find support through the fronts of the feet, not only does the core of the body drop back with the heels, but the tops of the thigh bones can drop away back and away from you with that same movement. So it's like you lower the tops of the thigh bones with the heels. Whilst the base of the spine comes up and through them. And this is where the widening action can be useful because if you use the purchase of the touch of the feet to widen the space between the thighs, you get two thigh bones pulling apart within, but there's a sort of slight rotational aspect to that that feeds into the pelvis further back. Lots of work for the thighs in the mid, around the middle and possibly a lot of work around the outside of the pelvis. But all this time, you can allow space in the groins as you breathe, and that's the time to find it. And as you release the breath, it's also the time to find it. So instead of the groins picking you up, your feet, your core, these core responses to the breath, it's the release of the breath that picks you up. And there's no tension, no holding, no lifting of weight at the groins. So that's one example. Um, I want to give you one more. Uh, when, when you do something like this to stretch your hips, you're, you're jackknifing against the front of the joint, which is tight, so it will feel tight. Um, you can get used to that <laughs> and sort of relax around it, but it's not that useful. And um, quite often, the way you bring the leg towards you in the first place is by tightening that muscle. It, so, so we're sort of a bit buggered. <laughs> if you want the groins to row in tight, you need to feel supported by the ground. So when that knee comes towards you, you don't lift it up. When that knee comes towards you, you press into the ground. So I've got the other leg on the ground. I've got the pelvis on the ground. I've got uh, head, shoulders. If I press down enough and this foot activates, it becomes possible to sort of leave that space and when the, the, foot, the leg itself comes up, it's from other places. It's the foot itself picking itself up. It's the, it's the, the core of the body coming up away from the pelvis um, to help bring the leg towards you. It's some muscles around the outside of the pelvis, which is basically this leg getting involved with the space to the side, that same widening action. So, you know, if you want to stay spacious, this leg is going to have to work in this direction 
wide, away from the pelvis, whilst the pelvis and the contents want to work away from the leg. So if you can work in this way, as hard as that is, you can still get a sense of receiving the breath in this space. And the release of the breath can help you drop this space to allow movement. Space within the pelvis, space between leg and pelvis. So there you go. Um, it's as much as I can share in half an hour. Um, yeah, so essentially, you know, if you're growing, if, if any part of you is complaining about having to carry your weight, could be your neck and shoulders, could be upper back, could be elbows, knees. If any part of you is complaining about having to carry your weight, the job isn't to attack that area and sort of try and stretch it or, or um, uh, bully it into submission. <laughs> the, the, the first thing you have to do is work out how to not carry your weight in that area. That's part one. Put yourself in a situation where you don't, where that part of you no longer needs to carry your weight. Yeah? Um, uh, an example I was working on in class last, uh, last night. You know, people say, well, you know, my, my osteopath t told me to stretch my neck. No, 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 no. If this feels tight, it's because it's being given the job of carrying your head <laughs> and, and, and it inappropriately. So sort of um, pulling on your head to make more of a stress for it is not going to do the job. You might succeed in making it longer, but then you're even more stuck. What you need to do is find a situation. Instead of pulling on it, you need to find a situation where it doesn't need to do the job. So, um, I don't know, something like that. Then, when, when it no longer needs to do the job, you can find a, a relationship from that place that is feeling tight to the ground, to the ground, that allows it to let go. Then you've no, no longer got a, got a problem on that, on that side. You see what I mean? It's, it, uh, we tend to do the wrong, we tend to do the opposite of what's needed because we, because we separate from the body. But um, if, if you see uh, tension, if you see the, what, what the body is trying to tell you, it's, t it's telling you what it's doing. <laughs> it's supporting your weight, it's, um, you know, whatever. So, so, so your job is then to listen to that information and um, respond to it appropriately. And generally speaking, if you've got habitual tension from going about your daily day-to-day uh, -day life, it's because that part of you is busy carrying your weight throughout the day. Lie down. Find a situation. Lie down. Sit down. But find a situation where that part of you doesn't have to carry the weight. And what's more, you need to f find a situation where you can cause the two halves of you that make that relationship. The two halves of you that describe what that what that area is uh, a function of. So groins is everything above the, the pelvis up, uh, everything from the thigh bones down. You see, so you you put yourself in a situation where the where the tension can be released because it's not given a job of holding weight, and you can support the two halves of you in a way that allows that place to have more space so you get that experience once you've created the space then you then need to learn how to use that joint go through it in a way that doesn't replace the reason for being tense which is basically a buckling of that joint a pushing against that joint usually so so you know if it um I won't go into it too much, but uh, the, 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 it's a, you know, uh, you, if you if you can find support that travels through that place, if if before it was busy carrying weight because of some distortion, having made the space, having having relaxed things so you can make the space, you can then you then need to reorganize so that you can give weight through that place without it buckling. 
then it can be free. And, and um, that will involve the rest of the body changing. <laughs> so if you, if you want your groins to change, it's not your groins that need to change. If you want your hip flexors to change, it's not, they don't need to change. You need to change. The way you relate to that place needs to change. And uh, if you work in a way that kind of intends to leave them out of the picture, um, throughout your practice, by the end of it, you'll have a brand new body that knows how to not hold themselves together at the groins. Okay, I think I think that's covered it. Um, I hope that was useful and um, that you've found some value for your own practice in this. Whether you've got hip uh, groin tension or not, it's a, a valuable exploration. Uh, and this principle, this way of looking at things, will transform your practice and and get you to become embodied. Because the um, the body works in relationships, the mind works in serial objects. You know, binary thinking, up, down, left, right. The body doesn't work that way. It works as relationships. So yes, I hope, I hope that was useful for you. If you enjoyed it, then feel free to share it around whilst it remains on Facebook. I leave it up for a few days before I put it on the website for my premium members. Um, yeah, currently, there's a superb deal for um, people that want to get gain access to uh, most of my, uh, my, my, all my classes and my Saturday morning workshops. Uh, you can you can become a gold member very cheap at the moment, um, uh, twenty four ninety five, which means you get um, access to um, on demand access to all the classes that have gone so far. There's hundreds of them. All the yoga solutions so far has has uh, probably a hundred of those. Um, a deep relaxation course, and that, that's being added to between ten and ten minutes and half an hour. You get access to all this um, on demand. And for now, you also uh, get the option of turning up live to classes and Saturday morning workshops in view only mode. So you, you get to be there for the live event. You can still ask me questions via chat, um, but um, without your camera on. So, so that, um, I, uh, I'm working with the people on the screen. So uh, it's, a, it's a deal at the moment that's, um, I'm not sure how long that will stay up. Um, it's the current gold membership. Uh, or your uh, silver membership is it's less than a tenner a month, and you get all of these, uh, all these yoga solutions, and you get access to the um, to the uh, deep relaxation course, which is an expanding resource. Uh, and, let, and for people that are on a full-on journey, you can join Platinum, which is less than fifty quid a month, and you you come live to everything and get access to uh, all the resources. Um, CPD courses, separate events um, for people who want to go even deeper still. So there you go. <coughs> so that's pretty much what I got on offer. Um, things to, you can book uh, right now. Um, I've got my Envirosomatic course, uh, Envirosomatic Intelligence course. Uh, it's the 5th of 6th. So I don't think you can drop in on that anymore, but you can join that course in uh, in an on-demand fashion um, and um, it comes with a free one-to-one -one, as do most of my online courses uh, what else yeah uh, Saturday after next is another Saturday morning retreat they're, they're always uh, open to all all comers and they're always very um, nurturing and uh, enjoyable two and a half hours just 27 quid to turn up live or 15 pounds to drop in view only, or again, uh, free to drop in a view only with gold membership. Uh, platinum membership, you just turn up, uh, turn up to pretty much everything. Okay, uh, that, that's my membership stuff. Um, but you, yeah, you, uh, you can book individual classes. I've got one shortly in 20 minutes or so uh, today. There's, there's another one tomorrow at 11. So, and there's one Monday evening. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So yes, that's me telling you about all my all my stuff. Um, that, that that'll do. Um, yes. Yeah, so I hope uh, that was useful. If you found it useful, or if you enjoyed it, or if you know someone that would be interested in, in experiencing what you just tried, then uh, share it around and um, as freely as you like. 
and uh, before, before it goes off Facebook. Okay, I will see you same time, same place next week. Much love to you all now. Bye now.